In this episode, we are going to apply all concepts you have learned so far in previous videos, including freight terms. For that reason, in case you are not yet familiar with FOB shipping point, FOB destination, freight collect, and freight prepaid, as well as trade discount, you might want to refresh your mind first with part 2 of this lecture series. Learning accounting is like building a house. The foundation must be very strong. Parts 1 and 2 of this lecture series are the foundation of recording transactions for a merchandiser. Journalize the following transactions of Primark merchandising. That means we are on the viewpoint of Primark merchandising. April 3. Agnes Hugar invested cash of 80,000 pesos and merchandise worth 50,000 pesos in her business. Agnes Hugar is obviously the owner of the business because she made an investment in the company. But again, we need to record the transactions of Primark. We are on the perspective of the business, not of the owner. So from the perspective or viewpoint of Primark, when the owner made investment, what did it receive? Cash and merchandise. Being both assets, how do we increase cash and merchandise inventory? By debiting both of them. Because the normal balance of asset is debit. Each one for the amount as stated in the transaction. The cash and the merchandise came from whom? From Agnes Hugar, the owner. Therefore, the owner's equity or capital increased. To increase capital, what must be done? Normal balance of capital, credit. But don't credit just the word capital, but Hugar the surname of the owner, then the sign for comma, and then the word capital. Ugar Capital is the appropriate account name for the owner's equity, which must be credited for this investment transaction in the amount of 130000 which is the total amount of the cash and merchandise invested. Then, have a simple explanation for the entry. To record investment by owner. Or even just to record investment. Some authors and professors do not even require students to write the words to record. There is no problem with that. Next, April 5. Purchased merchandise from Shalom Company at a list price of 100,000 pesos. Terms, 5% and 10% trade discounts, 1 over 10 EOM, N over 90, FOB shipping point, freight collect. Just from the first two words of the transaction, purchased merchandise, we know what must be debited, right? What account name? Purchases. For how much? Recall what you learned in part 2 of this lecture series. Do we record purchases at least price? No. What do we record? The invoice price. And how do we compute the invoice price? List price or catalog price minus the trade discount. Let's do the faster way to compute. The list price of 100,000 pesos times 0.95 times 0.90 equals 85,500. The invoice price, which we must debit to purchases. How did we get 0.95? 100% minus the first trade discount of 5% equals 95%. In decimal, 95% is 0.95. How did we get the 0.90 here? 100% minus the second trade discount of 
10% equals 90%. Converted to decimal, 90% is 0.90 or 0.9. How about the credit in our journal entry? Accounts payable. Why accounts payable and not cash? Because of the term 1 over 10 EOM, N over 90. That's why even without the words on account, we know the purchase is not on cash basis, but on account or on credit. How much must be the credit to accounts payable? 85,500 also. Explanation. To record purchase on account. By the way, how much do you think was the total trade discount? The difference between the list price of 100,000 and the invoice price of 85,500. That is 14,500. Do you see the amount 14,500 in our journal entry? No. Because the 14,500 is trade discount not cash discount. Remember, one difference between trade discount and cash discount is that trade discount is not recorded, while cash discount is recorded by the seller as sales discount and by the buyer as purchase discount. We do not have an account title for trade discount because it is not recorded. That's why the 14,500 trade discount does not appear here in our journal entry. Instead, the amount is just deducted from the list price of 100,000 to get the invoice price of 85,500. Before we move forward to the next transaction, let's review the meaning or essence of these freight terms. FOB shipping point, freight collect. When the term is FOB shipping point, who must shoulder or who should pay the freight cost or delivery cost or transportation cost? The buyer. Remember, Shibu. Shipping point, buyer. In other words, the buyer must be the one to debit the account title freight. In or out? In, because the merchandise goes in to the buying company. But how about this freight collect? Who actually paid the freight cost or delivery cost to the courier or carrier? The buyer. Just remember the Tagalog word for lump or cyst. Buhol. Freight collect. Buyer. Collect. Buhol. In other words, when it's freight collect, the buyer must be the one to credit the account name cash. And who is the buyer in this transaction? Primart. In short, Primart must be the one to debit the account title freight in because of FOB shipping point and credit cash because of freight collect when it later pays for the delivery cost of the merchandise it purchased on this date, April 5. And that later happened on April 6. Paid Triple B Express 1,500 pesos for delivery cost on the purchase. Here is the word again, paid. This word paid confirms the term freight collect we discussed a while ago. The buyer, Primart, actually paid the courier. So, credit cash for 1500 What did the business pay for? For delivery cost on the purchase. These words confirm the FOB shipping point we encountered in the previous transaction. The buyer, Primart, must debit 
freight in for 1,500 also. Then, explanation to record payment of freight. April 7, returned goods invoiced at 4,000 pesos, which were found to be of different specifications to Shalom Company. From these words, returned goods, we know this is either a sales return or a purchase return, right? Which one is it? From whose point of view are we? From Primart's point of view. Who is Primart with regards to Shalom Company? The buyer. Because recall that we have encountered a transaction with Shalom Company before. That was on April 5 when Primart purchased merchandise from Shalom. And actually, even in case we forgot for a moment this transaction on April 5, just from these words, return goods to Shalom Company, we must realize that Primart is the buyer. Because who would return merchandise to another business entity? The buyer or the seller? The buyer, of course. So if Primart is the buyer or purchaser, from its viewpoint, is that sales return or purchase return? Purchase return. And how are we supposed to increase purchase returns and allowances in Primart's journal? Normal balance of purchase returns and allowances. Credit. At what amount? List price or invoice price of the goods return? At invoice price. Because when goods are purchased, we record at invoice amount, not at least price. And therefore, upon any return of merchandise, we must record also at invoice price. And since it says here, invoiced at 4,000 pesos, then 4,000 must be the credit to purchase returns and allowances. What must be the debit? When the goods were purchased from Shalom, we credited accounts payable because the purchase was on account. Upon return to Shalom of some of those goods, what must be done to these accounts payable? It must be debited in order to decrease Primark's liability to Shalom. Also for 4000 Then. Explanation. Next transaction. April 8. Purchased furniture from Elegant Furnishing Shop at a list price of 40,000 pesos, less 3%. Debit? Furniture and fixtures, not purchases. Remember what I told you in part 5 of this video series? We must use the account title purchases only for the purchase of merchandise or goods. Here, Primart bought furniture, not goods or merchandise inventory. So the debit must be to the account title, furniture and fixtures, not purchases. For how much? Lease price of 40,000 pesos less 3% trade discount. 3% of 40,000 is 1,200. Deduct 1,200 from 40,000 and we get 38,800. Or simply 40,000 multiplied by 97% or 0.97 to arrive at the same amount of 38,800. Where did we get 0.97? 100% minus 3% equals 97%. Convert it to decimal and we get 0.97. Was this purchase of furniture 
on account or on cash basis. The transaction does not specifically say on account or on credit. It also does not state that the amount will be paid at a later date. Do you see any credit term? No. There is no credit term like 2 over 10 and over 30. This 3%, as already mentioned, is a trade discount, not a cash discount. This is not 3 over 10 and over 15 or something like that. And so, the purchase is not on account, but on cash basis. In short, what must be the credit in our journal entry? Cash in the amount of 38,800. Again, let me stress an important point. There is no indication in the problem that the purchase is on account. And so the assumption is cash was paid, even if it is not specifically stated that cash was indeed paid or that the purchase was on cash basis. Explanation to record purchase of furniture. April 8. Sold merchandise to Harriet Crisologo, amounting to 14,000 pesos. Terms, 2 over 10 and over 30. FOB shipping point, freight prepaid. 1,200 pesos. Sold merchandise. What account title comes to mind? Sales. When Primart sold merchandise, what happened to its sales account? Increased. How do we increase sales? Normal balance. Credit. For 14,000. But let me remind you of what you learned before. We use the account title sales or sales revenue only when what is sold is merchandise inventory. We must not use the account name sales or sales revenue when let's say the business enterprise sold its equipment or supplies or any other asset which it does not normally buy and sell. Going back to this transaction, in exchange for the merchandise sold, what did the business receive? Did it receive cash? No, because the sale was on account. How did we know it was on account? Because of the term 2 over 10 and over 30. Therefore, instead of cash, what must be the debit? Accounts receivable. Not accounts payable, but accounts receivable because we are on the viewpoint of Primart, which in this transaction is the seller. It sold goods on account, so its accounts receivable increased. It is entitled to receive cash in the future, hence accounts receivable. For the selling price of 14000 To record sale on account. But what is this 1200 pesos? Terms. 2 over 10 and over 30. FOB shipping point. Freight prepaid. 1200 pesos. So what is the 1200 The freight or the transportation or delivery cost of the goods sold. What must be the journal entry of Primark concerning the freight cost? What does this freight prepaid tell us? It tells us that the buyer or the seller actually paid cash to the courier. The seller actually paid the courier. And who is the seller in this transaction? Primart Merchandising is the seller. And since we are on the viewpoint of Primart, then we must credit cash for 1,000 
200. How about the account title to be debited? When the term is FOB shipping point, who must shoulder the freight cost? Or who must debit the account title freight? The buyer. And who is the buyer in this transaction? Harriet Crisologo. Harriet Crisologo, the buyer, must be the one to debit freight in or out. Freight in. But are we on the viewpoint of Harriet? No. We are concerned only with recording the transactions of Primart merchandising, not of Harriet Crisologo. So we must not write freight in here as our debited account. Must we debit freight out instead? Definitely not because the term is FOB shipping point not FOB destination, which means, again, that the buyer, not the seller, must record the freight. So, what then must be the debit of Primark? Think about it carefully. Who must have shouldered the freight cost or who should have paid cash to the courier? The buyer, Harriet Crisologo, because of the term FOB shipping point. But who actually paid cash to the courier for the freight cost? The seller, Primart, because of the term freight prepaid. Harriet Crisologo, the buyer, should have paid the courier. But Primart, the seller, was actually the one which paid the courier. If you were Primart, what would you do? Harriet should have paid. But you were the one who actually paid. What would you do? Ask for reimbursement. Meaning, ask Harriet Crisologo to pay you. In other words, increase your accounts receivable from Harriet. And how do you increase accounts receivable? By debiting it for 1200 Got it? Then, explain the purpose of the entry to record payment of freight on the same. At this point, let me ask you, how much is the balance of Primark's accounts receivable from Harriet? Debit accounts receivable for 14000 here for the selling price of the merchandise? And then, another debit in the amount of 1200 for the payment of freight for a total of 15200 If later on, just in case, let's just assume, our yet Crisologo is able to pay within 10 days from April 8, what must be the basis of this 2% discount? Must the discount be based on 15,200 total accounts receivable or only on this 14,000 selling price? Only on this 14,000 pesos selling price. In other words, the accounts receivable of Primart arising from prepayment of the freight amounting to 1,200 is not subject to discount, even if paid by Harriet in full within the discount period. Please keep that in mind. That is very important. So much for this part 7. We will continue with the remaining transactions of Primark merchandising in part 8. Thanks again for watching.